So what we're gonna go through today, it's about circular motion. Last time we did a lot of 45 degrees. So what is the circular motion? So circular motion, you have to understand that there are two forces that goes around. So if you think we have a start point here, after it goes circular, it goes back to its original start point. So if Chris holds me for my arms here, and he just stands still, so my goal is really important that I don't do the principle against myself. So this is basics, he holding me for the hands. The reason why he holds me for the hands is because it's easier to understand, feel and see. But afterwards with the more advanced and more realistic we started to grab any way we like. At the beginning it's just to feel. This is why we hold hands. And we are on the same balance here. So we're not starting to lose at the beginning. So what we're doing here? Like I said, we're not trying to make ourselves be affected by the principle, but only your opponent. The big mistake that people make in this principle is that they make them and their opponent to start to go into a dance. So how to do this circular principle? So I try to make a circular motion here. So I push one force go there and other force go there. So he rotates, really easy to understand. The mistake that people make when they push the, their opponent is when I push, he take a step back and nothing happens. We begin to dance instead. So if you continue moving, I pushing, I pushing, I pushing, nothing happens. Because we are affected by the same principle. Remember, my goal here is to make him and only him be affected by the principle. It's really important to understand that we always use 45 degrees in anything we do. So I'm gonna explain you really quick about 45 degrees angle. It's the easiest way to attack the balance. So if Chris spreads his arms, so 45 degrees is here in front of him, from the side, from other side and behind him. So if Chris makes a simple grab for my arm, so if I pull him here, 90 degrees, nothing happens. But 45, he starts to fall down. And the faster I do that, it's harder to him to adapt. But what I never should do is this, go down to the floor. Because now I got on the different level than him, and he got much more advantage over me. But you should not pull so he collide with you. You simply show him the way, pull him 45 degrees and make him fall. Then you can do 45 degrees from the side, here, and backwards, to affect his balance. It's really important to understand how the balance works. So if Chris stands here, once again spread his arms, his balance is here, between his legs. But what happens if he take a step here? So if he just turn around and take one step here, the balance is no longer here. It has shifted more this way. So you turn around a little bit, please. No, no, not like this. Like this, yeah. So his balance is right now here. So you need always to understand where your opponent's balance is. So if he stands straight, can you go back and stand straight? So if you think, oh, I know his balance is here. If you take a step forward, then after the step, his balance is no longer there. It has shifted its position. So if he holds me, first I do it correctly, he goes down. Good, I found his balance. But when I do it again and he steps forward, I do it again. No, don't sit down. Just step forward. There. Nothing happened. Because his balance is no longer there, he has shifted. So if your opponent took a step, then you have to attack the balance other way. And understand, it's really important to find your opponent's balance. So like I said, if we use a circular motion or circular principle against him, we need to find 45 degrees against his balance so he falls. So if I do a circular motion against my opponent here, I always need to pull him 45 degrees down. So if Chris hold me hard here, so I have two forces that should go around. Pulling there, pushing there, and not following with him, not making a dance. So, 
two forces, find his balance. So it's here. And when I do it in full speed, what's gonna happen is I'm not gonna be able to attack his balance because it's gonna shift. No longer there where it was. And same here, because I'm pushing him this way, his balance is here. And now when I'm pushing him, I need to see where the balance goes. But if I don't add the 45 degrees angle, nothing gonna happen. But as soon as I add the 45 degrees angle, downwards he's gonna fall. This circular principle can actually be used in other situations. For example, if we are here and he tries to hit me. I manage to defend myself, grab his jacket and use two forces to rotate him. I push him there, pull him there and the main goal is to pull him downwards 45 degrees. And if he's resisting and I do it wrong, nothing happens. And if the person is heavy, when I pull or push, I'm gonna actually follow in him. So what I need to do is the 45 degrees to make him fall. And the reason why I can do this is because I change speeds. If you simply just run, you can do it with no problem. But if you just squat down, it gets really hard to run. And this is the main reason why we don't get down to the floor before our opponent. So once again, he grabs me. So I pull, push here, pull there, and try to make my opponent rotate. So if you just stand here, like this. So when I'm here, I actually, by pushing him, I'm attacking his balance that way. But if I do, do it against his leg, it's gonna be hard, because he's gonna resist with his leg. I can uh, attack his leg to make him fall, but it's gonna be another principle that calls Caesar principle. But if he is a good opponent uh, that knows something, I can actually, if I attack his leg, uh, go into my own trap. So with here, he attacking me, I found the principle, find 45 degrees and make him fall down. It's, it's really important to understand, when you train, you need to over-exaggerate every movement. Because you're teaching your body correct and get the movement into your muscle memory. It's important to understand that we learn like children do. So when a newborn child is started to learn how to walk, he doesn't go fast at the beginning. So after a while it finds his balance and then he could start to walk. Don't try to do it fast as possible and think you understood everything. Try to feel and see what you are doing. And this is also the main reason why Sistema is so criticized, because we're doing everything so slow. And the reason for that, that we don't want to learn with stress memory, we want to learn with muscle memory. And what is the muscle memory? It's simply like this, when you eat food and read at the same time, or probably you're walking and you don't need to think step, 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 every step. Your body has already learned the motion and brain can relax. This is why we don't need to start with resistance at the beginning and create a lot of problems. This will also lead to that we're gonna get adrenal level, uh, small adrenal level, and our mind is not gonna be in so much focus that it needs to process all the information. What we're also gonna get is a softer version of the blackout and not be able to see everything. So once again, if Chris attacks me here, I grab him there, feel everything and see everything. The person is like a doll against me right now. And what this actually does is making me learn and see everything much easier. But he doesn't need to be too nice or too soft against me. He needs to have a little bit resistance also. Because if I didn't understand the principle and he started to resist a lot, it's gonna be hard for me to do anything. And when I did my principle here but forgot that I needed to do 45 degrees and I think I, I understood, so I'm trying to do and the person is re resisting, I do something and it doesn't work. Because when I do it fast and I think I understood but I forgot the crucial part in the principle, nothing happens. So do it slow, see, feel, push and pull, find the 45 degrees, his balance and if you do it correct, he will fall. So what we always say is that speed comes with knowledge. So once again, we're working with our opponent balance here, but now we're gonna go a little bit higher, a little bit more realistic in this situation. The person is gonna grab you here, and then he's gonna try to push you on your forehead. Not so hard. 
So what you're doing, you're not letting your opponent go away and you push on the forehead. So if Chris hold me, and like I showed before. So what we're gonna learn now, it's called triangle defense. Our triangle defense is really good, it works against any weapons and any kind of hits. So one thing is that's special with Sistema is that we're not using any techniques. We are using basic principles and principles can adapt to any situation. The problem is by learning the technique you are actually learning against one situation. If a person do this, I do this. When we get into a situation or against an attack we can use a simple defense. And this is a really simple defense, it's called triangle defense. And what we are doing, we build with our hands together a triangle here. Remember that elbows should be not so close to each other. Because if Chris attacks me here, attack my head, so when I use my triangle defense but my elbows are close together, I actually get hit on my shoulder instead. It's important to understand that we never use blocks, we use angles to defend ourselves. And the reason why we're not blocking is because when sharp weapons come out, so when Chris has a real knife here and he tries to attack me, like this? No, no, uh, you just slice me. It's slow because I'm gonna do it wrong now, so you not uh, slice my hand. First we start with thinking that this is a real situation, we are scared and in stress level. Then the person is g gets crazy and then he starts to slice me. And then I get scared, block, and if it's an axe, it's gonna chop my hand off. If it's machete also, maybe it chops my hands off. But if it's knife, it's gonna probably cut me into the bone. If you've seen on YouTube, when they cut, it goes deep. And it's easy, and even close probably not gonna save you. If you just simply try to block against a knife attack, like this, and I try to do probably better block, karate block, and I miss the hand and go for the blade, then I have a big problem. And when the blood is gushing out, you're not gonna be able to continue fighting. You're probably gonna get scared, am I gonna die, or maybe I need to go to a hospital not to lose my hand and the person not gonna just stand there he's probably gonna attack you even more and then you have a big problem that's why we never block we have something that calls reflect away uh, it's basically we use angles to reflect the attack and let it pass by so if Chris attack me what I'm doing is I avoid coming in contact with the knife I try to get as close as possible to the hand and reflect by using the angles. Of course we never stand still after we did our defense because if I stand still he gonna do something else and then I gonna cut, be, get cut anyway. So once again when he do, does an attack we don't block. Never block. And what we're saying here if you block you're gonna block yourself in your brain. So your brain is gonna go only for one thing. Block 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 that's because in a stress level is what you're gonna think it works. This is why we reflect the attack away and then we counter attack. Ignore the weapon at the beginning, whatever it is. Uh, later on we're gonna go on how to disarm a person. The reason why we're not going to talk about disarm today because it's too much to take at the beginning. But later on when we work against the weapons and have weapon knowledge, then I'm gonna show you how to, to think what to do against the weapon. Today we're gonna try to learn our triangle defense and how to use it in situation or against attacks. So if Chris hits me here and I try to use my triangle defense, important that I slide in. So when we do our defense, slide in, move forward and don't back away. And also don't stand still. If we stand still, we're gonna get maximum damage if we didn't do the correct defense. We try to get as close as possible to the hands. Even if we get hit, it's better here than here. So we slide in and get close to the person. Same here, from the circular principle. He, he hold me here for the shoulder. What you should think is that the hand is almost like a baseball bat, but instead it's hitting me from above, it goes towards me. So when the person hits you, you try to slide in. Close or open, it doesn't matter. So we slide in, grab him here for the jacket, and try to use our principle against him. So once again, he tried to hit me a couple of times, and I'm ready, I slide in, lock this hand as close as possible to the shoulder, and the reason why I got so close to his shoulder, because when he goes back with his hand, he can actually not do anything. Once again, I use my triangle defense, use my principles and take him down. So, try to experiment with these principles and this defense. Everybody understood? Good. Then begin to train. So now we're gonna go even more realistic. Somebody grabs you for the throat and uh, probably he grabs you for the jacket or something, pushing you backwards 
and say something to you. So how can we use this simple principle against him, a circular motion in this situation? And same like I said before, so he holds me here and uh, if you stand there, so I can explain. And we think that I'm standing here right now. Once again, we're trying to make a rotational forces. One pushing there, other pulling there. So push against his arm is no meaning because he's probably pushing you backward. Or he's just holding you here for the throat, but he's really strong here. Of course, you can use other defense to get away from this situation. What you can even do is use your shoulder to get away. Even if Chris holds me good here, I can use my shoulder to get away. But actually, even if I use the defense, I can still get hit or kicked while I stand here. So I actually want him to hold me there, but unless it's a life-threatening situation and he started to choke me out, then it's not good to stand there. But right now we're thinking he's just holding you there, if you go to the wall there. If he pushes you to the wall here, and you're like, oh, oh man, relax. So don't hold me so hard so I can talk, Chris. So he have pushed you to the wall and you're having hard to breathe. And even if you get in a worse situation, he probably holds you for the arm here. And the reason why he hold me up on my arm is because I can actually do my circular motion. If he is holding just on one hand, I don't have the two forces to turn him around and then I need to do something else. So can everybody see what I'm doing? Can you just stand so you can see what I'm doing? So what we do here, it's really important that we're using right forces here. So I'm pushing one hand there, if you go back, because it, we don't need the wall right now. So my hand is pushing his arm backwards, this arm backwards. So when we push his backward, we need to look at his balance, find his balance. How does he stand there or where his balance is here? So if I simply push this arm backwards and Chris starts to resist, nothing's going to happen. He can push me backwards. So what I'm doing, I place my hand here and release the hold. Like I said before, I, using my shoulder, and my hand between to release. The shoulder is really good when somebody holds you for the throat. We did our release, we grab him here, and here we are in our basic circular motion again, circular principle, like with, when we did with the arms. And some people say, nobody is grabbing you for the hands like this. Yeah, it can actually happens, but probably maybe one hand, maybe you grab him there. Uh, situation can be uh, different every time. So now I grab him here, I see his balance, I rotate him and make him fall. And this is works even better if somebody is pushing you backwards because when he pushing me backwards, I actually can feel his force and I know where the force is going. And this is gonna look more like Aikido because when, then I work against his uh, force and his balance. So it looks like this. So now we're gonna work with this and we are gonna apply our circular principle to more realistic situation. Begin. It's pretty easy to understand the leverage principle. If the opponent has the leverage, he's controlling us. If we all have the leverage, then we're controlling him. In our system we teach, you need to understand the basic physics, but it's just basic physics. You don't need to do a mathematical calculation. So the person have a knife here, and I need to understand how to easily take it out from his hand. And to do this, I need to understand the leverage principle. Because if I grab him for the hand, then we have a wrestling match here. But of course I can get closer to the opponent to have a more control. But I need to know how to take out the weapon. And the person can actually have a really good grip on the weapon. Well you should also need to understand that there can be many types of knives. Uh, hunting knives, uh, battle knives and any types. Double bladed, sing single bladed. No matter what type of knife he's holding, we need to find the leverage principle to take it from him. He can actually hold it blade up on the side uh, any way he likes. Our main goal is here, to find the leverage principle here. And what you need to understand, we have a fulcrum there and a lever here. And then we apply the principle and take the weapon out. But then we need to understand how to get the fulcrum here, under the arm, to get the leverage principle. If, it's if his hand moving around, then I don't have a fulcrum. Then I cannot take it out. It's gonna be really hard to do. But as soon as I find my leverage principle, then it's easy to take it out. So our main goal here is to apply the leverage principle and the, the fulcrum I'm creating by using my hand here or maybe my body. Or what you can use, you can use the knee to take it out. Uh, knee, don't try to kick it out, but actually 
when the person uh, you put him down here it's easier to use your knee and create a fulcrum and use the leverage principle to take the weapon out then also we have questions that we hear a lot can you have your hands around a sharp knife like this you should never have because if I hold like this and it pulls I gonna lose my fingers and we always train as if the knife is double bladed so we not grab it around but if it's single bladed and you feel it then you can actually have uh, one side on your hand but with single bladed if it pulls I not gonna get cut so what we do we control the fulcrum find the lever and then push the blade toward him and that is gonna make him lose his grip of the knife so now you can stand in a line here and I'm gonna try to take the weapon out by using the leverage principle you can try to hold it really hard uh, those that tried it before don't need to do it again so hold it hard and I take it out once again hold it hard leverage principle take it out and you take it out hold it hard and the leverage principle to take it out and you hold it really hard yeah so remember leverage principle if you come back here if I don't have a leverage principle I gonna and he resisting I gonna have really hard time to take it out and the person is not gonna just stand it and let you find the solution so you need to have the leverage principle to take the weapon out easy so now grab the training knife and start to work together to find the leverage principle so remember, when you train with those, you can actually damage yourself. Even if it's training knife, you can stab eye out. And Chris actually almost got punctured with these training knives. Those knives are not sharp, but they are metal and you actually can hurt yourself and get some bruises. So I'm going to explain a little bit about weapons. In the street, you can get any type of weapon against you. Big, small, battle knife, uh, machete or something like combat knife, maybe a hunting knife, any kind. And then you can actually get this against you, a kukri. Uh, let's see, there's safety, safety on here, huh? Okay, yeah, there you go. So re remember, this is a real weapon. Is it sharp? Yes, it's really sharp, Feel. So when you see somebody walking around with this, maybe crazy guy walking against you with this weapon, it's really important to understand that distance is important. If you can, run. Understand this weapon is much more dangerous than the baseball bat because it cuts and can actually chop stuff So to go without knowledge against this is actually really dangerous. So I'm gonna explain something about baseball bats So if I get my real baseball bat here baseball bat is used to break stuff so understand uh, if baseball bat is long uh, and it should be able to Destroy stuff or break stuff. It should be heavy and uh, compact then it's much harder to swing with it it has a lot of time between the swings if I have something like a stick it's probably gonna break with the first hit because if I hit something that's harder you get somebody that attack you with baseball bat it's actually easier to defend against it and when I have a baseball bat it's harder to swing as I said also aluminium baseball bats that's much easier to swing with but they can actually bend and get destroyed but if you have a classic baseball bat this tree baseball bat and if I try to swing it fast if you go away Chris so I can show you so I try to do a fast swing here right now I'm just using a normal speed here not so fast look how much time it takes for me to swing back and forward and if Chris stands here I try to attack him here and I right now I'm just swinging from shoulder to shoulder but if I need to add more weight to get a much more damage it's gonna be harder for me to swing back again so the Chris goal is when I swing he's just try to fast get and tap me on my forehead so I'm not gonna try to attack him I just swing and your goal is to get close to me and tap me on my forehead so I'm not gonna attack you, I'm just gonna do a simple swing forward, back and forward. So when you're ready, I start to swing, bam, you see how less time I have to swing again. So now take the bat and try to swing as fast as you can. Same here with this weapon. As If I swing hard with it, I can feel that it stops uh, at some point. So if this would have been a heavy sword, if you've seen medieval times, when you swing, it takes a lot of time to swing again. 
So this is why you're never going to see a big sword swing fast. They have smaller swords to have more speed. And that's the reason why when they hit with a heavy sword, it's just to break shields uh, and get closer to your opponent. And then they have daggers and they attack you with the dagger. So, if Chris come here, same here. Uh, if you try to attack me with this, uh, just slice from up uh, sideways here. Uh, but do it slow so I can show what happens. So you attack me here, to my throat. Yeah, here. So once again, yes, exactly. So once again, attack me there. Again, this can be a baseball bat or this can be a kukri, like this. And if I block, like I said, we never do, this gonna happen. And what happened, my hand is gonna fly off or it's gonna get stuck in my bone there. That's why, like I said before, we never try to block. Remember, nobody is gonna try to block against this. Because when you see this, you'll not be able to block against this weapon. And also a person that's crazy is unpredictable. If he starts to slice around, you'll not be able to find a good block that works against this kind of attack. This is much easier to swing than baseball bat. So if you see somebody at the distance walking against you uh, and you have the time to run, then you have to run. It's nuts, it's nuts to get into a fight with somebody that has this weapon. But if the distance is really close he, and I do attack before he time to react, do you think he's able to run? No, he's not going to be able to run. So if I take the training Kukri here, and what we're gonna do is, this is not sharp, so you can feel it. This is a training. So, so if Chris gets close to me when we stand here, and then I, I suddenly try to attack you, try to run. You see? And this is just one attack, and he, he not was able to run. But if I attack once again, and more attacks, can he run? No, he would not be able to run. And even situation can be like this. Chris is walking home, try to unlock his door and suddenly a guy comes with a kukri like this. The person is aggressive and goes towards him. So he yeah, has nowhere to run and I said, hey, did you say something against me? And I see this knife, can he run? Probably not. So you need to understand that sometimes you need to close the distance. If somebody talking to you, you maybe have a chance. But if you cannot run, you have to at least do something. You cannot just stand there and think he's not going to do anything. I'm standing here and he has nowhere to run. He actually tries to get closer to me, but at a good distance. And that's why we have this chant that we use against weapon. Distance is important. If I cannot work against weapons, never do this. If he stands with weapon like this. Never try to kick it out or do something that you see in Hollywood movies. Your, your leg is gonna get chopped off. I would love to see if somebody did that against a real machete or a real cookery. Remember, when I cannot reach the weapon, I cannot work against it. But if I can, I should work against it. And this is when we have nothing we can do. We're stuck to a wall or maybe a door. Then we have to do something. We cannot just stand there, push against the wall and say, Oh, I hope he not kill me. Probably he's crazy and they're gonna kill you anyway. So the distance is important. If I can reach the weapon, I can do something against it. If I can't, I cannot work against it. But if I can reach the weapon, I should actually hit it out. But understand, uh, I'm not just hit it out and do then nothing, because this is not going to lead to anything. It can actually be easy. When I hit, it flies out. Or maybe I hit it and didn't fly out. That's why we have steps. If I didn't hit it out, then I try to take it out. I probably hit his hand and he got loose in his grip, so I hit it there and then I hit him there and the weapon is uh, get loose in his hand, then I can actually take it out and then work against him. If I cannot take it out, so I find the distance, stand just there, so if I do something he's probably gonna attack me. So I'm not just standing still. So I need to do something and I know he's crazy. It's any second he can attack me. So don't stand like a target there. I need to work. So I'm here. Do I have a good distance? Can I reach the weapon? Yes. Then I can work against it. When I hit the weapon hand and try to work against it but I can't because I pushed it too far away. Then I need to do something else. Because right now I cannot take it out. 
so you did something wrong then you don't just stand there because they're gonna attack you anyway so then my next step is get closer to him so when I fail to take the weapon out then I'm gonna work against the body so and this is why it's really important that you know your basic principles and how to take him down remember this this is important you, c you should never wrestle against a weapon because if you start to wrestle with somebody that has experience probably you gotta have a problem so once again I hit the weapon hand it was pushed too far away I cannot work against it and then when I get close to him and to try to do my principles I need to understand the weapon is still in the game so when I took him down here it's not gonna end so easy Your opponent is actually gonna try to attack you so when I took him down I always need to control the weapon and not letting him attack me again so once again I get close I attack the hand nothing happens I take him down to the ground and then you take out the weapon by using our leverage principle but if suddenly I see that he's trying to find another weapon maybe he has knife in a the pocket then I can do something against him by using his weapon against him so here we have a real knife it's sharp so Chris is gonna try to stab me here yes yeah, stab so he tried to stab me and now the speed is low so you can see what I'm doing he attacks me I need to know how to work against the weapon and how to use my principles against him that's why we need to have this in muscle memories when this stuff comes out because when it's real weapon uh, we're gonna get tunnel vision and stress level is high first in tunnel vision we will not be able to see everything so if he holds me here with knife and I don't believe in myself and I start to think what should I do 45 a Caesar circular and start to sweat and doesn't know if I can do my stuff because I don't have this in my muscle memory muscle memory look like this your body is able to attack your opponent without thinking about it in high speed your brain is be able with muscle memory to solve the situation by itself and when that's gonna happen there's no reason to back away just react to situation and continue with your defense that's why it's so important to have those principles in our muscle memories so start to train at the beginning slow if you are starting to become more confident and know what you're doing, harder resistance, faster speeds, and more realistic attacks comes later when you get advanced. Uh, Chris, come here. So what you're gonna do now, you're gonna try to find a circular principle here. What we're gonna do, we're gonna attack each other, but don't go into a realistic attack, go with fast, don't do it right now, we're not gonna go through it right now. Right now we're working with basics. So we do a basic, he stabs you in the stomach here. You try to not back away because you not be able to do that when he suddenly attacks you and you're gonna be stabbed twice maybe before you react. Remember this. If you have a distance, run. But if you don't have a distance, you need to go forward. So when Chris stabs, I twist my body, get as close as possible to him and everybody look here I'm not trying to get as close as possible to his hand because it's really fast there it's hard to grab so if I try to grab his hand and he tried to stab me come on come on fast 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 it's really hard to grab the hand here so what I'm doing here I'm trying to get as close as possible to his elbow or even better to his shoulder because the shoulder is almost never moves from his position so when I he attacks I move my body, go close to his elbow and his shoulder and even if he pulls his hand backwards it's better to be close to his shoulder because then I have control and then when we're here we try to find the principles uh, probably circular movement here then what I'm doing, I grab him for the jacket, try to push the weapon away from me and rotate him and then when he's down I use my leverage principle to take the weapon out and that's it so experiment with this